What's up guys, Triple M here again and today I'm doing a quick video to show you how to do three things to your Amazon Fire TV or Fire Stick. One, add extra storage. Two, use any Bluetooth remote or keyboard that has a USB dongle. And three, how to add a wired network connection to your device. And this is using one simple device that can be purchased for very cheap on Amazon. <laughs> All right, so here's the package, and let me just open it up. And this setup is pretty straightforward. So all it is right here, we have a micro USB. This will go into your device, your fire device. And on this end, it has three USB. This is also a micro. This is where you'll plug in your brick. And these are three available USB ports to plug in whatever you need. So you can plug in a USB flash drive, a Bluetooth keyboard, and also do a hard drive or whatever else you want it to uh, plug into your device. So on this right here, we do have two options here. This is OTG. You'll have it on OTG settings when you actually want to read from these devices. You put it on charge, all these turn into is just a charging station for your devices. So you can use it that way as well. Let's say you have multiple phones that you want to power or charge. You can just flip it to charge and you can use these three ports. So that's one option. Here's another option, um, same concept. This one is just a, a little bit more basic. So you do have the USB plug-in right here. You do have the micro USB port. So this is where it'll plug into your device. And you do have the port where your USB brick will plug into. So this one, you, you can use it um, with one USB device or you can go ahead and hook up another USB hub to here so you can have multiple outlets. So um, it's up to you, but I just think it's easier to just get this guy with more ports available already. Now, that way you don't have to buy more um, attachments for this. All right, so here I have my plug-in for my Fire Stick. Here's the USB out. So this will go into the wall. The power, the hot side will go into this guy right here. So into the micro USB port, plug that in like that. And this will go into your fire stick. So the basic setup would look like this. This obviously will plug into your television or your monitor and then you're good to go. So with this setup, you then have the option to plug in a USB drive and the option to plug in a Bluetooth dongle. And you also have the option to plug in a USB to Ethernet adapter. So that's big. A lot of people can't rely on Wi-Fi and they rather just have a hardwired connection. But you can actually plug this into one of the ports right here. Then get your network cable, plug it directly into here. And now you have a wired connection, guys. And that's how simple it is. And this is the Fire TV 3, third generation. Same basic layout. You have your power here. This can be your Ethernet if you decide to go that route. You have your Bluetooth dongle. This is where your keyboard and wireless mouse will attach to. I also have a USB drive right here where I can add files and other things. So all I have to do is just plug this guy in here. That's the setup. This goes into your TV or monitor and you're good to go. One thing you want to make sure is that this guy is set to OTG and you should be able to read anything from this. So that's the basic setup, guys. And once again, I'll put all the links in the description where you can pick them up on Amazon. All right, let's go over to the monitor. We'll plug it in and see how it works. And here we are, we're in the OS of the Fire TV, third generation, of course, and this is my keyboard right here, fully functional. And I also have the mouse that's fully functional as well. The only thing with the mouse is you won't see a cursor on the main menus of the Fire TV. One thing you want to do if you guys are planning to do this, you want to make sure that unknown sources as well as developer options is turned on to do that. Go over to your settings. You want to go down to device. Go to developer options. Make sure both of these are turned on. Once those two are verified, we're good to go. So for instance, if I was to launch Cody, I do have a mouse there cursor and it is fully functional so I can click on TV shows there we go I can go to my settings click on system settings do anything I would normally do back on out with the right click if I wanted to add a source go to add go to add source click there I can do HTTP colon force at force at Aries 
dash repo forward slash eu or whatever the source is and i'm good to go so just a quick demonstration showing you that the keyboard is fully functional now one application that you want to download with this is you want to make sure you have es file explorer guys so let me just exit out of cody and to get es file explorer just go here and you can type or use the voice remote whatever you wanted to do and there it is right there let's go down and that's the blue icon just download that and launch it the cursor does work in here as well a couple things hooked up to this I do have a USB drive I do have the Bluetooth dongle for my keyboard and mouse and also have the Ethernet adapter so I'll be testing all three of those so first thing you already know that the keyboard is working because that's what I'm using right now keyboard and mouse combo the USB drive that I have plugged in is right here so let's go ahead and open it if you get this pop-up you can hit always allow allow once or cancels I'm just gonna click always allow and here's my Kodi folder and I do have a couple things in here guys so I do have a couple APKs that I downloaded just wanted to show you guys that I can install directly I already have Terrarium TV mob Joe and I already have Kodi installed you can see I have two versions of Kodi here Kodi 17.5 as well as 17.3 one that I do want to show you that I can install directly from the USB drive is Chrome so let's click on Chrome and there we go I can install it directly from the USB drive so I'll go down to install and this you might have to use the keyboard and there it is Chrome has been downloaded so let me just click done for now I'm just gonna back out and another thing I wanted to demonstrate, I do have a couple of test videos on here. This is a Fire TV third generation, so they should be able to end the 4K. So that's my test videos. This is my DJI video. And let me just play with the ES Media Player. So it looks like this one is caching right now. And um, that's probably because it's a 4K video. It's a bigger file. So we'll see how that works. So let me cancel this. Let's see if it will play on something else. So let's launch it with Cody. And there we go. It looked like it is playing fine. So it looked like that was a strictly a ES File Explorer thing where it has to cache first. But this is 4K. You can tell it's um, doing a little stuttering. Um, but if you guys want a smoother playback, I'll just recommend transferring it directly to your device. I do have a 1080p video right here, so let's try that one out. And that one, I'm going to try it in the ES Media Player. So it looked like that one loaded a little bit better. So just the 4K looked like it does some caching with um, ES File Explorer. Let's skip ahead a little bit. And you can see that's working with no issues. This one is another 4K video. I'll give that one a shot. And... I do have the ES Media. We already know that that has to do with buffering thing. But this is where if you guys wanted to download, let's say, DLC or um, MX Player, that might be a benefit. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Saturday, we don't have much going on, right? Download app is going to come in handy here. So what I'm going to do is go all the way up. I'm going to search. I already have downloader, but all you have to do is just downloader. And there's that big orange icon. So you can download that, and that way you can sideload applications onto your device. So I do have the download app. Let me go ahead and launch it. I'm just going to put in Google. So google.com. So from Google, let's say I wanted to download the VLC player. All I have to type is VLC APK download. Go ahead and go down now. Go to submit and click go here and you do have a lot of different options just choose the one that um, that you trust the most so let's just go to this one apksforfree.com do have VLC right there scroll down and you do have the download right here so let's click on that and we'll go down to install And we're gonna click done. 
So we're gonna go back home again. We're gonna go back to that same video file and we're gonna go ahead and open it from the VLC player. So let's we'll go back to ES File Explorer. Let's just back on out. We'll go back to the wildlife. And now we have the VLC option here. Let's go ahead and launch it from VLC. We'll go down to allow. And there we go. Skip ahead and that's full 4K guys, UHD. All right, so that's how easy it is to get everything up and running on your Fire TV. One more thing I wanted to demonstrate is the ethernet dongle and right now, have it connected to Wi-Fi so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to do a speed test with and without just to see if there's any difference so I'm gonna go back home alright so let's go ahead and begin test this is wired in still using the USB dongle and there we go we're getting 70 that's what we should be getting also getting about six about six upload so that's still pretty good all right so that was my test and my results wired in so let me go ahead and disconnect this I'm gonna go to Wi-Fi and let's test again see what we're getting all right so we're still getting about 67 66 68 it looks like download and that's our upload speed so still pretty good so here are the results for both test guys they're pretty close and that's because I'm right next to my router about three feet away and where this becomes a bigger issue is if you have a Fire Stick or Android box or a Fire TV that's down the hallway in another room or whatever the case is. What you can do from there is you can run a wired connection directly to it and you should still get these speeds as if you were right next to the router. So one way to achieve this if you don't have a Ethernet cable ran you can go ahead and do a power line adapter. I haven't reviewed one yet but there's plenty of them out there and they're pretty good. What they do is they essentially um, plug into your router here at the source and you plug it into your power plug and what this does it sends the network signal down the power line into a different room and then you plug in the second part of it in the power plug downstairs or next to the, the device that's plugged in plug in a wired connection directly to your box and that's as good as running a network cable from your box so um, that's definitely all my things to do guys just a, a quick overview of power line adapters I know a lot of you guys will benefit from it so stay tuned for that video but as far as this this was supposed to be a quick video that turned into a not so quick video so showing you guys how to add stores to your fire stick or fire TV also how you can hook up a, any Bluetooth keyboard with a dongle to your device and last but not least how to give your fire TV or fire stick a hard wire connection so if this video helped you please give me a thumbs up I will be putting links to all these in the description of this video uh, also please remember to like share and subscribe don't forget to hit that notification bell uh, thank you for watching and I'll catch you on the next video